So this blade was designed to be an all-around camp bushcraft survival knife. It cuts, it batons, it chops, and you can actually do fine carving with this. Of course, all these determine on your own skill set, but it can do the job. But I also wanted to incorporate a couple other features that most knives don't have. And with the removable scales, I was able to do that. That was a big thing on this knife. It had to have removable scales to do what I needed it to do. A lot of knives have removable scales, but with the shape of this here, it actually holds into a shaft much better than most. So, I'm going to take the scales off. I'm going to show you a couple things you can do with this blade since it has removable scales. Before I start, I want to show you, I put this pouch on here and I also modified this for my own needs. I have the ceramic sharpener on the back. I've got it on a belt carry and I put this pouch on here. Now this is all according on how you weave your paracord that comes with the sheath. Now what I have in this pouch is I've got a ferrule rod and I have 18 feet of bank line, number 36 bank line, and I have two of these screwdriver bits that they will fit inside to loosen this. Now there's a couple ways if these are really tight and you want to be able to get them out but you can't turn this with your fingers you can use a stick, split a stick, grip that and that will help to tighten around here so you can get these if they are tight. One on each side possibly if you need it. But I just snug these up good and I have not had a problem. But it's always good to have the extra gear in case something isn't going just right. So I'm going to show you how this comes off the scales and then I'm going to show you some pretty cool things that this can do. Now before you start taking off your screws out of here, you're going to want to put something underneath so you don't lose them. Very important, you do not want to lose these because they can become lost very easily. So if you put something down and you're working over top of it, if you drop a screw, it's going to land on that and you're going to be able to find and see it. So, I'm just going to take one of my drivers, put it in there, and start turning. Now, that there does not want to turn. It's fairly tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a way to actually make these a little easier to turn. But I've also used dimes on these, and that works really well. And you can do the same thing with many different items to, since they are slotted screws. So what I've done is I've just cut this off and I've split it down here. Now I could take a dime, stick a little piece in there, grip it tight, and use this for leverage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here, same way. I'm just going to squeeze on that. I couldn't get that off before, but let's see now. Well, try to get this in there nice and tight. There we go. That one was uh, a little tough, but I've got it. Just got to squeeze that tight. There we go. First it was slipping, but what do you do? You keep trying until you get it. That's just another way to, to grip that if you needed to. 
and as you've seen it does work. So I'm going to take these out over top of there and then we'll get to it. So here it is right there when the scales are removed. Now this was designed to put inside, slide this into a shaft. So you can make this into a defensive spear if needed. Or you can use this for a harvesting tool. As a survival knife, being able to make this into a spear and having a spear that is going to perform also having a harvesting tool that you can reach up grab fruit and such off of trees grab higher branches and so on is another plus in a survival tool in my the opinion. SBP also features a tapered tang it's thicker up here and narrows down that allows for when I stick this in a shaft it will fit better and it helps distribute the weight forward for chopping. Now I got a couple sticks on the way in and I usually carry a saw and a knife with me but I could have easily taken these with the, just the knife alone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make this into a spear and you can clean this all up before you take your scales off I've got to split this and such you can do all that before you take your scales off but I just want to show you how it's done now this one here is only this long and the reason why I prefer a short spear just because I can maneuver it a lot better. I still have a pretty good reach. I can still slash and such. But I can swing this a lot better than I can if I have a six foot spear. That's for myself. That's what I prefer. And the way I show you this, you can have any length that you like. But what we're going to do first is... I'm just going to... Take that off a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to see how this is going to split. So I'm going to try to split this down through. And a lot of woods that you're going to get, some of them will spiral as you split it down. The straighter you get it, the tighter it's going to be. I have no idea until I actually split this. And then we'll see. But I have seen it spiral and I have put my blade in one that is not perfectly straight. And as long as it's tied in there, it's not coming out and it will still work. But if you want a very tight fit, you may have to be very picky with your wood if you have time. Ah, <laughs> that split perfectly. So there it is, and you can see that split rather nice. Now I can take this out, and I'm going to grab from the back side, of course, not the sharp side. 
And what I want to do is I want to be able to put that down below these notches. So, uh, right there looks rather well. You can see the notches are down here, right there. But you see how that is spread open. That's a good thing because that means when I squeeze this together, it's going to hold it a lot better by friction. Now there's many ways to do this. You can actually take a saw and cut a groove in here. Then you're going to get a perfect fit. You can see right now that this is coming down into here and it's not going to be perfectly straight. It's not bad. I can take and carve this off some so it goes more into the blade if I like and such but I'm just going to do a quick spear just to show you that if you needed a quick spear you still can so what I'm gonna do right now this is my 18 feet of bank line I'm gonna go back there and start setting this up and getting this ready to wrap so I'm gonna just unwrap this first and as any shaft, you've got to tie below your blade. Otherwise, this will keep splitting down through. You've got to have that tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a knot. I'm going to leave about four inches. That's going to be my tie off. But I'm going to put a Canadian jam knot in here or a slip knot. So, got that like that. Now that's going to tighten up on here and I'm going to have this for tying off after. What I'm going to do is go over top, come down. I'm going to go below the blade and pull that really tight. And then I can start wrapping. Now I've got more than enough here and that's what I wanted but I'm also thinking that I can push this down like this and when I get to the up through so I can get it tighter. Now, always be mindful of that blade. You do not want to have it slip on you. So be very mindful of that blade. What I might have to do is just squeeze this with my hand and then tighten this right up. Now you can also use something round like this and pull that really tight. There we go. And now I'm wrapping right up to the notches. Then I'm just going to start wrapping back down. So I've got that wrapped, and you can see the difference. Still a little bit of a gap up here, but you can only do what you can do out here. So this is why I left that tag end. I can now wrap that up and wrap this down through. Now, the paracord on the sheath, you can, in an emergency, use that. It's not going to be as strong of a wrap as this. It does work. I've done it. But you're limited with how much cordage you have. Now, you could take the paracord apart and you get more that way and such. So in an emergency, if possible, you had nothing else, you could use the paracord to make somewhat of a spear or harvesting tool with what's on your sheath. There it is right there. And that's not moving. Now, you can see the way it's wrapped here in through those notches, comes down, grips there, 
and it comes down through. Now, when you start beating on this and such, this is going to come back, your blade. The blade is going to come back a little bit. It's according on what your wrap is, but it's going to fetch up. It's not going to come out of there, but it will come back just to tighten up on here. This is 36 bank line, and it's not going to break it. Now, what I have is I have a pretty nice weapon. I can slash, I can stab, and the thing is, even if I'm not hitting with the blade, just with this alone, the weight behind that, it's like hitting an animal with a baseball bat. So, it makes for a very nice weapon for defense. This is not meant for throwing. It is not meant for stabbing in trees and prying. This here has a piercing point, so it will pierce, and it's a slasher. So I've got that tied on. I'm just going to take a few chops at that, and you know the pressure that that's going to create right there, because it's almost you know, blunt force just driving that in there. And with that handle, it's a lot of pressure. Now I'm going to show you how far that moves back. And not much at all. That's fetched up against there. It's not going to move any further than that. So, it still is straight enough. You can stab with and so on. This here would make a very nice defensive spear. So, this here is a harvesting tool. Now, you can cut this any length you want, but now you have a scy for gathering grasses, for bed or for thatching and such, but you also have a tool that you can reach high into a tree and get yourself fruit or nuts and also cut branches if need be. You can see how I wrap that, it's the same way, I split it, put it in the shaft, and wrapped up through. So this here, I designed that so you could make the spear, you could make the harvesting tool. I've also got a video where I made a smaller version of this and used that for harvesting grass in the same manner of construction as I just showed. I know it works. I've also cut trees off and so on. Now, I wanted to share that with you and just show you some added benefits by having removable scales and this shape the way it is that you can get out of the survival bush point. I want to thank you for watching and take care and always appreciate it.